Hello guys, welcome and welcome to Meteor Academy, one of the leading academy in training nurses in their competitive exam as well as IELTS and OET training and also we are doing assistance in abroad nursing placement and today we are going to discuss about the neurological disorder in specific about head injury and spinal cord injuries and if you like this video please like it, share it, subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon. Let's begin the session. The first question is, which of the following is a symptom of increased intracranial pressure that should be reported immediately to the healthcare provider? The given options are constricted pupil, decreased level of consciousness, narrowing pulse pressure and bradycardia. And here the correct answer is option B, decreased level of consciousness that has to be reported immediately to the healthcare provider because the altered level of consciousness is the most sensitive and earliest sign of increased ICP. The next one is identify an yearly symptom of spinal cord tumor from the option underline the word yearly symptom and given options are position changes leading to complete anesthesia, pain worsen with activity, straining and lying down, impaired sensation of temperature, touch and pain, the last one is clumsiness, weakness and spasticity. It is a direct question and here the correct answer is pain worsen with activity, straining and lying down. Answer is B. The next one is the nurse is assessing vital signs of a patient with head injury. Which of the following findings indicate ICP? Options are tachycardia, decreased body temperature, bradypenia, widen pulse pressure. And here the correct answer is option D widen pulse pressure. The rational is signs of ICP or I am going to list out the signs of ICP listen carefully altered consciousness, headache, vomiting, abnormal respiration like chain stroke respiration, Cushing triad an important sign which include three things the first one is rise in systolic blood pressure, second one is widen pulse pressure, third is bradycardia. Widen pulse pressure means a large difference between your systolic and diastolic pressure. Other things are elevated temperature, pupils are fixed and dilated and it is not reactive to the light. So these are all the options of otherwise manifestations of increased ICP. The next one is which assessment data would make the nurse to suspect the client with a C7 spinal cord injury experiencing autonomic dysreflexia. Options are abnormal diaphoresis, a severe throbbing headache, a sudden loss of motor function, a spastic skeletal muscle movement. And here the correct answer is option B, a severe throbbing headache. And the rationale behind this is autonomic dysreflexia. It is also called as autonomic hyperreflexia is a condition that occur in a person with a spinal cord injury at the level of T6 or above. It is mainly caused by distended bubble or bladder and also stimulation of the skin. The manifestations are the first and foremost thing is severe throbbing headache with hypertension up to 300 mm of Hg that is systolic blood pressure will be there. And apart from that profuse diaphoresis, flushing of skin and etc. Many manifestations are there which you are going to see now. So here you should know the pathology of autonomic dysreflexia because of fullness of the bladder or urinary tract infection, fecal impaction, pressure ulcer, restrictive clots, there is a stimulation of sympathetic nervous system below the level of T6. Once the nervous system, sympathetic nervous system is activated, the impulses will be taken by the afferent neuron towards the brain but because of the block at the level of T6 the information cannot be carried to the brain and because of activation of sympathetic nervous system severe vasoconstriction will be there below the level of T6 because of severe vasoconstriction it is sensed by the beta receptors which is present in the arch of iota and this hypertension information which is sensed by the beta receptors will be carried to the brain and the brain will make or give the order to dilate the blood vessel and decrease the heart rate. So above the level of T6 dilatation of the blood vessels will be there, decrease in the heart rate will be there whereas 
below the level of T6, contraction of the blood vessels will be there, activation of sympathetic nervous systems will be there. So this is the thing coming under autonomic dysreflexia. So if you know this pathology, you can easily come to the answer. The next one is an yearly sign and symptom of increased ICP in children. Options are increased vomiting, bulging anterior fontanel, increased head circumference, all of the above. And the correct answer is option A, increased vomiting. And the rationale behind this is nausea, vomiting, headache, lethargy, drowsiness, diplopia, blurred vision and seizure. These are all the yearly manifestation of raised ICP for children. And bulging anterior fontanel, increased head circumference are the signs of raised ICP in infants. The next one is, after lumbar laminectomy, the nurse should increase the patient to cough, instruct patient to bend knees while turning, assess patient for indication of peritonitis, log roll the patient by using draw sheet. And here the correct answer is option D, log roll the patient by using draw sheet. The rationale is, after laminectomy, Encourage the patient for deep breathing exercise and use of incentive spirometry every second hourly. There should not be any movement in the spinal cord. Restrictive movement should be there. And the next thing is coughing should be discouraged because it will increase the intracranial pressure. Assess the patient for nerve root injury. Example, ability to dorsiflex the foot in lumbar laminectomy and hoarseness of voice in cervical laminectomy. So at last, log rolling technique used while turning the patient. The next one is, which one of the following is not true for increased ICP in infant? Underline the word infant. The options are drowsiness, increased blood pressure, vomiting and bulging fontanel. And here the correct answer is, option B, increased blood pressure. The rational is, the signs and symptoms of increased ICP in infant are vomiting, Drowsiness, irritability, high pitched cry, bulging fontanels, wide suture, an increased head circumference, dilated scalp vein, and sun setting sign. Because of hydrocephalus, the person or the baby eyes will be dropping down. So that is called as sun setting sign. You can see in this image very clearly. The next one is which one of the following statement by a patient with backache should alert the nurse? The options are pain on movement, pain radiating to leg, perineal anesthesia, pain sensation lost in the feet. And the correct answer is option C, perineal anesthesia. The rational is perineal anesthesia, also called as saddle anesthesia, is defined as the loss of sensation to the area of buttocks, perianal space and ties. It is often seen in cauda equina syndrome. The next one is, you observe that a patient of head injury open his eyes on painful stimuli but not on command. He localizes the site of the painful stimulus and mutter incomprehensible sound. His GCS scores is in the range of 5 to 6, 9 to 10, 12 to 13, 14 to 15. And the correct answer is option B, 9 to 10. The rational is, the patient open eyes on painful stimuli, so the score is 2. Localize the site of the painful stimulus, so the score is 5. Mutter incomprehensible sound, so the score is 2. On the whole, if you calculate, the GCS will be 9. That's why we selected the option 9. In order to be able to provide independent care for oneself, the minimum level of injury to the spinal cord is Options are C4, C5, C6, C7. Understand the question properly. Here the person has spinal cord injury. And even though he is having spinal cord injury, he can perform or take care himself. Take care himself. So at what level of injury the person can take care himself? This is how you have to understand the question. And the correct answer is answer D, C7. The rational is spinal cord injury at the level of C7. The patient triceps muscle, underline the word triceps muscles are innervated and can perform self-care tasks, including transfer with greater ease because of the ability to perform push-up using the triceps. Whereas an individual with C6 spinal cord injury cannot perform its daily activities. The next one is 
A nurse assess the patient respiratory status. Which of the following symptom is an early indicator of hypoxia in an unconscious patient? Hypoxia you have to underline in an unconscious patient. The options are cyanosis, decreased respiration, restlessness and hypotension. The correct answer here is option C, restlessness. The rationale behind this is restlessness and increased respiration are the early indicator and Sinosis is a late sign of hypoxia. The BP is not an immediate concern in hypoxia. That's why we selected the option restlessness. Next one is a client is admitted with a C6 spinal cord injury. That client most likely has which of the following condition? Options are aphasia, paraplegia, hemiparesis, and quadriplegia. And here the correct answer is. Option D, quadriplegia. The rationale is injury occurring between C1 to C8 may cause paralysis of all the four extremities, otherwise called as quadriplegia. Injury between T1 to L4 may cause paraplegia. The next one is an assessment specific to safe administration of IV mannitol is options are vital signs fourth hourly, weighing daily, urinary output hourly, loss of consciousness. Checking fourth hourly and here the correct answer is option C urinary output hourly. This is a direct question. A doctor advised the nurse to prepare the room for a patient with spinal cord injury at C7 level. Which of the following is the most essential to keep ready for the patient? The hollow brace device, a catheterization tray, a ventilator on standby and the spinal kinetic bed. And here the correct answer is option C, the ventilator on standby. Why? The rationale behind this is, although the phrenic nerve which is responsible for the respiration arises from spinal segment C3 to C5, they are saying that the phrenic nerve which is responsible for respiration, it is arises between C3 to C5, the major arises will be in the C4. That's why if there is any damage to C4, immediately the person will go for respiratory arrest. But still, up to C8, if there is any damage, the person can go for respiratory arrest. That's why you have to keep the ventilator on standby mode. The next one is drug which is contraindicated in head injury. The given options are morphine, antibiotics, oxygen, IV fluids. And here the correct answer is option A, morphine. Morphine sulfate should be administered with caution in a injury patient because it may cause respiratory depression. The next one is, a young patient who was hit by a car was fortunate, underline the word fortunate because the level of his injury did not interrupt his respiratory function, did not interrupt. The cord segment involved with maintaining the respiratory functions are Options are thoracic level 5 and 6, thoracic level 2 and 3, cervical level 7 and 8, cervical level 3 and 4. And the correct answer is option D, cervical level 3 and 4. The rationale behind this is cervical injuries above the level of C4 may cause respiratory paralysis due to the damage of the phrenic nerve which is arises from the cervical plexus which is originating from the spinal segment 3, C and C5. Already we discussed about these rationals. The nursing action to be promoted for a child with increased ICP is the Options are elevate the head of the bed 20 degree and position child so as to maintain in midline Elevate head of the bed to 40 degree and turn the patient frequently from side to side Suctioning every hourly, scheduled range of motion exercise vigorously Listen to the option first and second Elevating the head of the bed to 20 degree is also right Elevate head of the bed to 40 degree is also right Along with that they have given other lines also they not only given elevate the head of the bed to 20 degree and also they given position the child to has maintained in the midline. So underline the word the baby has to be kept in the midline that's why I am selecting the option A. We should not turn the patient frequently from side to side that's why I rejected the option B. So the correct answer here is option A. The next one is pinpoint pupil is characteristic of glaucoma, barbiturate poisoning cocaine abuse pontine hemorrhage and here the correct answer is option d pontine hemorrhage the rational is a hemorrhage involving the pons is called pontine hemorrhage which is characterized by loss of consciousness quadriparesis and pinpoint pupil 
The next one is which of the following method of ICP monitoring provide the most accurate result? Options are epidural catheter, intraventricular catheter, subarachnoid catheter, intravertebral catheter. And here the correct answer is option B intraventricular catheter. It is a direct question. The next one is a client diagnosed with a subarachnoid hemorrhage has undergone a craniotomy for repair of a ruptured aneurysm. Which intervention will the intensive care nurse implement? The options are administration of stool softener BID, encourage the client to cough hourly, monitor neurological status every shift, maintain dopamine drop to keep the BP 160 by 90. And here the correct answer is option A, administer the stool softener. The rationale behind this is increased ICP is the main complication after the craniotomy so take all measures like administer soul softener to prevent increased ICP. The last one is lucid interval is seen in intracerebral hemorrhage, extradural hemorrhage, acute subdural hemorrhage, chronic subdural hemorrhage and here the answer is option B extradural hemorrhage and the rationale behind this is Extradural hemorrhage or epidural hemorrhage is the most serious type of hematoma which is formed between the dura mater and the skull due to the tearing of the meningeal artery. It is characterized by a brief loss of consciousness followed by a lucid interval. So what is lucid interval? Temporarily regain of consciousness and again the person will lose the consciousness rapidly. That is called as lucid interval. So I'm ending the session guys, hope this video will be most useful for you guys. So if you like this video, please like it, share it, subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon. We are making so much effect in order to make you understand the things properly. So if you like this video, please share to your friends, colleagues also so that everyone will get benefited. If you want to contact us, please contact in the given address, mail id, phone number given here. Thank you very much.